Now, that's a consequence of the long-term or chronic hyperglycemia, and it's the most famous effect of glucose. And indeed, many um, conventionally trained individuals would stop there and say that's the only, that's the end of the story. Well, it's not. Let's go further than that now. So the first point I want to make is that hyperglycemia, the more glucose is elevated, the more insulin is elevated because glucose is the primary stimulus for inducing an, a secretion of insulin because one of insulin's most famous jobs, but I do not say that it is its most important job, is to open doors of the cells, these glucose transporters, to allow the glucose to come from the blood and go into the cells to be stored or burned. So the more glucose comes up, the more insulin comes up. The result of this then is that with more insulin comes more insulin resistance. I've talked about that previously, so I'm not going to revisit that particular effect of too much insulin causing insulin resistance. That has been an explicit topic of previous metabolic classroom lectures. But what I want to focus on is just the phenomenon of eating more carbs resulting in the need for more insulin. And as that, even in fasted states, so not just, I mean, it would be obvious that if you eat more carbs, which would convert into more blood glucose, you're going to get more blood insulin. But what if you have people that are eating more carbs and then even when they're in a fasted state, their insulin is still much higher than what it used to be? That is insulin resistance. Remember, those two things go hand in hand. Where you have more insulin resistance, you have more insulin. You cannot tease the two apart. Okay, so I want to cite a couple studies, and you can find links to this in the show notes. So in one particular study, they fed subjects in two different diets. They were eucaloric, so the same number of calories. One was high carb, and then one was high, low carb, high fat. Um, at the end of this period of higher carb or higher fat, there was about a 50% increase in the fasting insulin of the group that was eating the higher carb diet. This was just short term. This was just over one week. Um, so a, a substantial 50%. Now, lest you think that is impressive, there was another study linked in the show notes that did something pretty similar. It was just six days and they had them overeat this high carb, lower fat diet. And they found that in this case, insulin went up by double. This was fasted insulin just in one week, having a diet that was much more focused on carbs and cutting down fat in just six days, they're fasting, fasting insulin. I don't mean just after they ate their meal. I mean, they ate a dinner and they don't eat anything for 12 to 16 hours. Then they measure their fasting insulin was twice as high as in the, uh, before they ever started this. Also, just as an interesting note, their triglycerides went up significantly and that is relevant because triglycerides are one of the more predictive markers of heart disease, far better than LDL cholesterol, despite our obsession, not mine, but the hour as in the sort of collective biomedical realm, an obsession with LDL cholesterol, all because of its apparent ability to predict heart disease. Well, it's a terrible predictor. Triglycerides are much better. And again, interestingly, on the um, focusing on just consuming more carbs, triglycerides spiked. Okay, so that is one consequence that um, hyperglycemia is contributing to insulin resistance, which uh, in turn amplifies the hyperglycemia, which in turn amplifies the insulin resistance. And you can see quickly how that becomes a vicious cycle. 